Hashtag log cabining. Is that, can that be a thing? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world. Um, if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I did indeed take a break from recording last week. Long story short, Dennis and I were supposed to get away for vacation. It didn't pan out and so our schedule got completely jumbled and I just decided not to record because because life. Anyway, I'm back this week. Thank you so much for your patience. This is a channel where I sit down with you once a week and share what I've been knitting and lately what I've been quilting. Uh, I have a tendency to fall down many a different creative rabbit hole here on this channel. So uh, if that is your thing, welcome, gather around, grab a cup of something because we've got, we've got things to chat about. Um, but because this is the last week in April, I believe we're long overdue for a <laughs> monthly favorites uh, slash roundup episode where I just regale you on all the projects that I've been working on, uh, what I've been into, what's been inspiring me, what I've been watching, listening to, you get the idea. But to be completely honest, I, I'm feeling a little scatterbrained when it comes to what exactly I got up to. The days, the days, they just kind of, they've been blending together because, uh, yeah, Dennis and I, we're, we're still in the process, believe it or not, of settling into our home. We've just had a lot of construction, home reno stuff happening around us. It's just been jumbling our schedule, uh, if you can imagine. So, you know, we're making do, we're still settling, we're, we're, it's still a to-do, but at the end of the day, we are just so completely smitten with our new home, we're enjoying it, we're loving the area, and yeah. Anyway, I'm rambling at this point, so let's get into the meat of the episode. Uh, yeah, elephant in the room. I don't know if you can tell, but my ranunculus, my ranunculus? is finished. She is done. She is bluffed. She is photographed. She's on the Instagram. She's on the Ravelry. Yeah, we have an FO this week officially. And yeah, it feels, it feels like so long since I've finished anything, specifically a knitting project. But uh, yeah, I, I have to say like between again, the move and just life being upended and stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I definitely went through a phase where my knitting mojo kind of went up and down and projects that I gravitated towards didn't exactly pan out, losing steam on things. Anyway, I'm just so freaking happy that I have something off the needles that I absolutely love. Um, but yeah, I'll stand up so you can see it. Uh, again, this is the Ranunculus Pullover, a beautiful and very, very popular pattern by uh, Midori Hirose, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, but these are the sleeves. Let's see, I actually did the the I-cord bind off for this, and I really love it. Um, and I like that it doesn't hit my wrists. Usually I like my sweater sleeves to go, to extend beyond my hand so I can like kind of do one of these things, like pull it over my knuckles, but I decided to end it like right above my wrist, and I, yeah, I just absolutely love the way it looks. But for the edge, I just did a twisted rib bind off and then bound off in pattern, nothing fancy. Um, yeah, just very, very simple, straightforward. And, and I know many of you are wondering about the neckline because um, many people complain how the neckline is just way too wide. To be honest, I really don't know what I did differently. I followed the pattern as it was. Um, I used a US size eight needle for the cast on, just a regular, simple, long tail cast on. Um, I use, But yes, I used that size eight for the neckline, for the the I-cord bind off and the ribbing at the bottom. Um, and for the rest of the body, I used a US size 10. Honestly, I really didn't know what I was going to get at the end of it. I just cast on with reckless abandon as I usually do. I didn't swatch um, and just said, it's gonna turn out the way it was, it, it's gonna turn out. I was actually hoping that the neckline would be a little wider because I actually do like the wide neck look on this, you know, just a light, airy, summery, summery top. But um, yeah, surprisingly, it just turned out a little more narrow. Um, although I will say that Midori Hirose just released or recently released a an update to the pattern with more size inclusiveness and uh, more refined instructions. So that may have had something to do with it. I didn't look at the previous version. So just bear that in mind. Um, if you have the previous version and have knit the previous version, you might have ended up with a larger neckline. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I should mention that this, I followed the pattern for the most recent pattern update, if that makes sense. The yarn that I used, oh my goodness. 
What a dream. I knit this sweater holding two strands of yarn together. Uh, the first yarn that uh, I, and <laughs> Bella's already chewed on the label. Thanks, Bella. I used this yarn called Ilmani Sabri, and it's this beautiful shade of charcoal uh, held together with Ito Sensei in the goat colorway. And yeah, I mean, if you're not familiar with Ido Sensei, I feel like it's pretty popular. You may have seen it floating around your LYS, um, but it's 60% uh, mohair, 40% silk really really fluffy and what i love about this colorway is that it has like the core of the yarn is like this taupey pink color uh, and then the fluff is like this beautiful sage green and it, it just has this very opalescent look to it love it and thankfully i have um, one skein of each left over so I can create a matchy matchy project of some kind. Um, but yeah, the cool thing that I really, really love about the Ilamani Sabri is that it's 85% uh, organic cotton and 15% baby alpaca. Uh, it sounds like a very, very counterintuitive fiber content, um, fiber combination, but I was so incredibly surprised by, you know, the feel of it. I mean, it feels so incredibly soft and yeah, it just knits it beautifully together with the with the Ido Sensei. So um yeah, I'm just I'm I love this project so much. I don't know how much I can say that. <laughs> uh yeah, I picked this up from uh the yarn shop Pick Up Every Stitch in Mount Kisco. It was from my first meetup with uh Jana and Kim of the Knit Together with Jana and Kim podcast or YouTube channel, uh and Katie of Katie Did Bags. Uh you know, when I first moved here they reached out and you know wanted to know if I'd be interested in getting together. And we all met up at Pick Up Every Stitch and had a really wonderful time. And I saw that, you know, the ranunculus was in full force, you know, over there. Uh, you know, Kim had hers on, uh, Jonna had hers on, Katie had knit one, and there were people casting on a ranunculus, and I was just like, I need, I, I need to hop on the bandwagon. I, I'm not a true Westchesterian <laughs> until I've knit the ranunculus, and here we are. I'm very, very happy to finally be part of the, the ranunculus club. So anyway, uh, yeah, if you are considering casting one of these on, again, go for it. I highly recommend it. It came, it knit together so quickly. I mean, it took me, I, I looked on Ravelry, my project page, um, and yeah, it did indeed take me about a month to knit, but that's because, you know, I, I've been knitting on and off on this intermittently in between other projects, but in hindsight, if this was the only project that I, I worked on, I, I could probably have it done in like a week or two. No lie, no joke. Um, it just knit up super fast. Ooh, I think I just saw a raven. Uh, will I knit another one? I, I could definitely see myself knitting another one. Do I want to knit one immediately? Maybe not. Uh, I, I think I'm gonna take a break from the ranunculus for now. Maybe I will revisit when the weather starts to turn again, but yeah, I, I have my sights set on some other things right now, but um, yeah, just very, very happy to finally knit it, and I love, I love every stitch of it, and cannot wait to purchase more. Seriously, this yarn, Ilamani Sabri, Chef's kiss, so good. If you can get your mitts on it, highly recommend it. Okay, I think that's all I wanna say about this pullover. Um, so moving along, let's talk works in progress. It's no secret, I have a lot of projects on the go right now. Uh, stuff that I've cast on, we, I mean, we have the, the Once in Floral pullover that I cast on, we have the Shamshella shawl that I cast on, and then there's the Don't Look Up pullover that I cast on. Languishing whips, guys, um, and I'm not gonna lie, I've, I've lost steam on all of those. Uh, I know, I'm, I'm guilty of losing steam on quite a lot of things. And um, yeah, I mean, what you gonna do? So, you know, while those are kind of marinating in my whip spin right now, I have a nice little basket next to my desk over there. I'll try and insert some B-roll of it here. I just got like a nice laundry basket from a, from Target and it just houses all of my project bags. This way they're, they're kind of out of sight, but not out of mind, if that makes sense. Um, so that's where they're marinating. So I was browsing Ravelry and, and for some reason, a lot of crochet cardigan patterns were catching my eye. And I don't know about you, but uh, when I go shopping, I lately I've been seeing a lot of crochet garments coming back into fashion. Uh, it's very bohemian, very like hippie-esque, and I don't know why, but I'm kind of here for it. I, I It just makes me so happy to see little granny square cardigans and skirts and just things popping around that I'm just like, I'm looking at it, I'm like, I could totally 
make that. I could totally make that. Um, so yeah, I did, you know, hop on Ravelry and uh, queued up a couple of patterns that caught my eye. And I did share these patterns over on the Monday Waffle, which is a bonus vlog for members. Um, side note, if you would like to support this channel, uh, there's a button right below this video that says join. All you have to do is click it. And for a monthly fancy schmancy cup of coffee, you get a bonus vlog for me uh, every week, every Monday. And I lovingly call it the Monday Waffle. So just a very, very casual vlog, me sitting down, chatting, catching you up on, um, you know, what I got up to over the weekend, craft-wise and life-wise, random, babble, musings, all that good stuff. But yeah, if you, if you do choose to become a member, you are supporting this channel. And to that, I say thank you. Thank you so much. There are three patterns that caught my eye. Uh, the first is a free pattern actually by one of my favorite designers. It's the Ariana Cardigan by Amy Christophers. And it's, so fun guys. I mean, it's, it's granny squares in cardigan form, but the, the granny squares are on the bias, if that makes any sense. So cool. So clever. Um, so I did, I queued that up. The second pattern that I found was a really cute cropped granny square cardigan. Uh, it's a paid pattern by, uh, Caitlin Barthold. I, th I believe that's how you pronounce her name, but, um, yeah, just really cute. Lots of possibilities for color play, um, with, with any granny square, project, honestly. I mean, granny squares are perfect for experimenting with color combinations. And, you know, if, if you don't want to knit a swatch, I mean, what's quicker than, than whipping up a quick granny square to see how colors are going to play together. Anyway, I just randomly thought about that. The pattern that really, really uh, grabbed my attention that I really want to make uh, is a pattern that is sadly out of print. Um, it is by Patents Australia, and it's called essentially the... <laughs> Granny Square Cardigan by Patents Australia. Um, so I did chat, again, I did chat about it on the Monday Waffle and a lovely, wonderful member, uh, I don't know if you want me to say your name, but she reached out to me. She's in Australia and said, hey, my local yarn shop has it and I'd be happy to send it to you. I mean, truly, knitters, crocheters, fiber people are the best. Um, so if you're watching, Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, we, we were gonna chat and get in touch, but yeah. Um, but it, worst case scenario, I was seriously contemplating reverse engineering the pattern because it seems it seems very simple to replicate. Essentially, all it is it's granny squares grafted together uh, in cardigan form. But the thing about this pattern in particular, if you look at it, uh, the edging has like that handkerchief shape, um, you know, where it has it points down, or like a yoga cardigan type look to it, nine granny squares grafted together into a square, into one big square and rotated and then connected on either side. And you know, the, with these crochet panels in the main color, grafting everything together. I don't know if I'm making any sense. It makes sense in my brain. So uh, if you were bearing with me, uh, you are amazing. <laughs> so anyway, that is where my brain is at the moment. Uh, yeah, granny squares. But in the meantime, uh, I was still kind of stumped as far as what to cast on next. So. <laughs> When in doubt, when in doubt, cast on a sock. Am I right? And this seems so out of character for me these days because I don't know, I just fell out of, like I, I have love-hate relationships with knitting socks. I wouldn't say love-hate, that's probably the wrong way to say it, but I, I do go through phases of knitting socks and not knitting socks. Um, I can remember casting on a pair of socks, but I can't remember the last time I completed knitting a pair of socks. Um, I will say though, they make for great palette cleansers. You know, when, it, when you're done with a project and you don't know what to knit on next, cast on a sock because it's like just around knitting, knitting in the round, in the round, in the round. Um, so that's what this is. That's the purpose that this sock is serving for me at the moment. Uh, and, and it's actually twofold because I'm getting together with some friends this week, uh, this weekend. And I just want something that I can go on autopilot with and, you know, be able to have a conversation with my friends at the same time. So, uh, yeah, sock, sock to the sock knitting to the rescue. And I actually have the, the yarn sitting in this bowl. How stinking adorable is this bowl? I love it. I love it so much. It's just a pottery bowl with a, a rabbit on it. I mean, I have another one of these and it has a raccoon. Uh, Bella is actually using that as, as her water bowl at the moment, but today this one is serving as a yarn holder. And the yarn is, I don't know if you can tell, but it is Zauber Ball. So yes, the yarn is by Chopelle. It's their Zauber Ball Crazy uh, in the, oh my goodness, German, come on. <laughs> uh, I don't know what colorway this is. One day, 
one day, Nora, I know you're watching. She's from Germany, and um, yeah, she keep every, every once in a while she'll ping me. Hey, are are you picking up German again? <laughs> I I have to get back on that bandwagon. I really I would so love to learn to speak German fluently. If you're not familiar, um, my grandmother uh, was German. And I would spend summers, you know, when I was when I was very very young, I would spend my summer time uh, going to Germany with her and visiting with my great grandmother because I didn't want to go to summer camp and I hated summer camp. I did not like it. Um, so my mom's like, "If you okay, it's either summer camp or or Germany with your grandma." And I'm like, "I'll take Germany." So uh, yeah, I would spend I spent a couple summers out there hanging out with my grandmother, my aunt, my great grandmother, who by the way was the knitter of the family. She would just be hanging out in a corner, uh, knitting away on a pair of socks nonstop. If you've been following me for a while, you've, you've probably heard this story, but just to regale those uh, who are new here, um, yeah, my, my only regret is not knowing how to knit or connect, being able to connect or, you know, bond with my great-grandmother at the time. I was like, I, I've, I've been going there since I was like six years old and then I went when I was a little older and then again when I was like 16. Um, I was just, I, knitting wasn't in my life at the time. Um, I would only, you know, just observe my great grandmother sitting there knitting on a pair of socks every time I would visit. And my other regret is never learning German. Uh, you know, I can understand, I can understand certain sentences in German. I know a few phrases, I know some swear words, <laughs> but uh, speaking it fluently, it, I'm just not there. Uh, but I would love to, love to learn it one day uh, and, and be able to speak it fluently because while it's, while it's not the language of love, so to speak, it's, it's just such a fun language. Mm, I don't know, it's, it, it's a great language and I would love to learn how to speak it one day. But yeah, Sauber Ball. Um, it's gray, I love it, and it's knitting up so beautifully. I mean, look at that gradient. Yeah, it's so cool. So in case you don't know, I like to knit my socks using the magic loop method, uh, and I will link to a tutorial because I did make a tutorial on how to magic loop. Uh, for those of you that would like to learn, uh, I'll link it up in the doobly-doo. And my go-to needle size of choice is a US size 1.5, 2.5 millimeter, um, and, and if you are new to knitting socks or would like to learn how to knit socks, I have a tutorial for that too. So I'll link to that in the doobly-doo as well. So I've got you covered on how to knit socks. I've got you covered on how to knit magic loop. Um, and, and you know, Bob's your uncle. So anyway, check that out. Um, but yeah, these are definitely holding my attention and keeping me company until my yarn arrives for my crochet cardigan because I did order some yarn for it and I'm very, very excited. I think it's gonna get here tomorrow. That said, I might I might do a little unboxing for members, uh, you know, create a little bonus vlog for you guys. Um, yeah, so, all right, knitting. That's, that's all the knitting content that I have to share with you this week. Uh, but moving along to English paper piecing because my La Pasacagia, I think I shared this on the last episode, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but if you follow me on the Instagram, you may have caught wind that I started a new La Pasacagia, and here she is, making a ton of progress on this. And yes, my friends, I am indeed using all Liberty Fabric Tanalon. This is an indeed a luxury, <laughs> a luxury uh, project that I am working on. Um, it just feels so nice. But yeah, this is from the book of book of Millefiori Quilts 1 by William Hammerstein. Um, I will link to it down below. But I mean, needless to say, this itches so many scratches that I have when it comes to um, just hand stitching. It, it's just like fussy cutting, just intricate, slow, methodical movements. It's so meditative. Um, it just it soothes my soul on so many levels. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't know if you guys can tell, but this pattern right here, that is from the Strawberry Thief pattern. So here's the print. You can tell that I fussy cut it because right now the edges of this look like Swiss cheese. But uh, yeah, it, it's, you know, um, basically I took my template and framed out a section of the print, uh, and then did that a couple of times. And when you put them all together, it creates this really cool kaleidoscope effect. Um, and that's what you get. That's what you get here in the center. So yeah, I, I it just, it's so magical. I, I cannot tell you how mind blowing it is when you see this all come together. And honestly, there's no rhyme or reason to my color choices here other than I'm just kind of going with the flow. So I started with this star in the center and then I picked a, a, a print that I liked and just worked with that. And then for this one, I felt that the greens picked up on the little green accents in here and just fussy cut it out all these little floral 
um, blooms and then obviously went with solid green and then repeated this fabric right here that was in here just because I felt like the greens in here picked up on that and then anyway you see how my mind is working, <laughs> I hope. Um, but yeah, here's what the back looks like. All the little paper bits are still uh, inside. Um, I'm gonna leave those in there until the very end just to uh, maintain the structure and integrity of the, the rosette. But here you can see I started on the, uh, the outer border of the rosette, so. Yeah, this has just been a really nice project, you know, to come to at the end of the day and just slow down and put on an audiobook or watch a YouTube video or Netflix and just unwind. But again, this is a pattern from Millie Fiore Quilts 1 by Willene Hammerstein. She has a whole bunch of different English paper piecing patterns in there, but this is the most popular one. You might have seen it floating around Instagram if you follow the hashtag. Really, really it's just it's so much opportunity for color play uh, in this in this project. It's really really cool. Um, so I will leave a link to that book down below. But I also did create a PDF uh, in case you're interested in making one of these because when you buy the book, uh, she shows you how to piece everything together in the order and how to create the pattern. Um, but you do have to sit there hand drawing all the shapes. So you know they're they're just triangles and diamonds. But if that's something that intimidates you or you just don't have the time to sit there and hand draw all those. Those little shapes out. I did go ahead and uh, create a PDF that you can purchase and download. All the pieces you need to make one of these is in that PDF, so all you have to do is print it out, cut it out, and then cut out your fabric and have at it. It's, it's super easy. So um, I will leave a link to that down below if you're interested. Um, and I do, I just released a, a tutorial on how to do English paper piecing, and again, I will link to it in the doobly-doo up here. So I need another word for the doobly-doo up here. Um, the ether up here? I don't know. Um, suggestions down below. But uh, yeah, so that's English paper piecing. Uh, quilting, on the other hand, is, is coming along very, very nicely. Um, well, with, with a little caveat. Um, <laughs> because if you've um, been tuning in, you know that I did start my double wedding ring quilt. And here's one block. And yeah, guys. It's coming together, it's coming together beautifully, but I'm not gonna lie. This is indeed a labor of love. <laughs> um, this one square, this block right here is comprised of uh, four separate blocks. And yeah, I'll hold it close so you can see, but um, yeah, it's, it's labor intensive, my friends. Um, and so far I've made three. And to make one, I should say that to make one of these, I didn't exactly time myself, but it felt like it took me about easily three hours to make four blocks to make one of these blocks. So yeah, it's very time consuming. It's not one of these uh, quilting projects that you can punch out over, over the weekend. Certainly not, this is definitely going to be a labor of love. It's gonna take me quite some time to complete. I've, I've just, surrender to the idea. So, um, so far I have three blocks. Here's another one. Uh, and then here's the other one. So, um, you know, while, while that's all fine and good, I'm all for slow. I mean, clearly I'm, I'm here for slow projects like this and English paper piecing, but then there is the side of me that does love a good instant gratification project. I mean, who doesn't? Um, so I did, you know, I did, start another project on a whim just one day I, I i've i've been on kind of like a log cabin quilting kick uh, i again i talk more about this over on the monday waffle i you know with members um i just i i completely just geek out over there and talk about everything and everything that's that enters my brain basically um and log cabins log cabining as I'm calling it log hashtag log cabining is that can that be a thing I had two jelly rolls in my stash uh, one jelly roll was a pack of um, just grays all all grays from light to dark and then the other one was creams from again like light to to dark um, and I, I purchased them online you know just because I, I liked the aesthetic of them I, you know just I liked the colors that were in there and I don't know I just purchased them for a rainy day that rainy day came and I decided to start a log cabin quilt and here is one of the squares look at that I, guys I mean this is completely like it, it, 
not, it, it seems like something that's not in my wheelhouse, the whole color scheme of things. It's turning out completely unlike I imagined it, but I am pleasantly surprised. Um, and you're probably wondering, Kristen, what's with the, what's with the red square in the center? Well, my friends, um, I've been learning quite a bit about log cabins, the history and everything, because you know me, when I, I love my history, I love learning about the origins of things and why things are and the history, uh, you know, that, yeah, need I say more. But upon learning about the history of the log cabin, traditionally log cabins were made with a red square or a yellow square to symbolize um, the hearth, the home, it, it's, you know, so of course I was just like, all right, let's, let's go with a red square in the center. I think that'll tie together, you know, the, the neutrals happening in here. And I, I'm getting very nautical vibes. I do know about you because the grays, they are looking more blue than gray, uh, when you pair it with the, the yellows of the cream. So I don't know, it's having like this completely different effect. Isn't that, isn't that wild though? Like when you pair different colors together, they take on kind of like a new personality. So while the grays alone, they look gray, uh, and the creams alone, they look cream, but when you pair them together, you really see the nuances. So this is more yellow and this is more blue or cool. Um, and then the red just kind of pops, you know? It's, it's so wild, but uh, this is one square, one of, I believe, 12 that I made over the course of a week. I mean, no, I started this last Saturday and Saturday I whipped up eight squares and then on Monday I whipped up six squares. So I have a nice little pile amassing. Um, so yeah, th these are coming together so nicely. nicely. Uh, and here's another variation where I have some more darker. Yeah, here it really looks nautical. <laughs> it's so cool, guys. Um, so yeah, log cabins, holy cow, they, they come together super quick. They're super fun. Uh, I, I am here for it and I, I suddenly want to do all the log cabining. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what's happening on the quilting front these days, but I don't know how big this quilt is going to be. I'm just going to keep using all of my, my jelly roll strips. If you're not familiar with what a jelly roll is, basically they're, they're pre, it's pre-cut fabric for quilting and they come in strips. They come in 2.5 inch strips in different colors like this. Honestly, it, it reminds me of, or at least the cream ones, it kind of reminds me of lasagna. <laughs> the way that they're like, because they have the pinked edges, it, you know, they, they shrivel up a little bit. It's, it's so funny. So I feel like I'm, I'm just sewing with lasagna all the time. Um, but yeah, that is a jelly roll. And the pattern that I'm following is from Missouri Star Quilt Company. It's very basic. She actually, you don't even, honestly, you do not even have to purchase the pattern. Um, she has a couple of tutorials on YouTube, which I'll link to down below. And she shows you exactly how to make a simple log cabin quilt, which is what I'm making. So again, links below, uh, links all around. So there you go. All right, my friends, that I believe. Yes. Yes. Looking around, no more projects lying around. All right. We're, we're there. Uh, that is all the creative content that I have for you. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Um, I'm going to move along to the blather segment where I regale you with, yeah, what, what I've been listening to over the month of April, because yeah, I, you know, I feel like I've, I've been binge watching quite a bit of TV. I've been listening to quite a lot of podcasts. Um, so I feel, you know, so why not share that with you? Um, as far as what I've been watching, uh, I've completely, I think within the course of two weeks, I watched all four seasons of Killing Eve on Hulu. Actually, only three seasons are on Hulu, so I had to subscribe to AMC uh, where they air Killing Eve uh, to watch the last and final season. Thankfully, they offer a seven day trial. So <laughs> I was able to, you know, do the trial, finish watching Killing Eve and then cancel my subscription so I wouldn't get charged because honestly, I, there's nothing else on there that I, I really want to watch. But, um, yeah. Uh, wow. What, what a series guys. I, you know, I, I was obsessed. I could not stop watching this show. It was so well done. Sandra Oh and Jodie Comer. Oh my goodness, guys. What a, what a combo. I mean, they, they play off of each other so well and they have like excellent chemistry. Um, but what I love so much about the show is, you know, not, I mean, yeah, it's very, it's very graphic. It's very gory. If you're not into violence, I mean, not, definitely not the show for you, but, um, I know there were certain scenes where I just, I had to look away. But other than that, I mean, I love the, the outfits, the fashion, the scenery, because, uh, it's shot all over, you know, England and Europe. 
the UK. Um, they, they go to Scotland at some point and, you know, it's just, I just love the scenery and yeah, it's such, a, such a well done show. I mean, if, if you guys are into that type of thing, I highly recommend it and easily very bingeable. Um, so yeah, that's what I binge watched. Um, I haven't found a replacement yet, but, uh, as far as podcasts, um, I took a little deviation from what I normally from what I normally uh, listen to. And I started listening to uh, Fly on the Wall, which is a podcast hosted by Dana Carvey and David Spade from, they used to be former cast members of Saturday Night Live, which is, if you're not familiar, I'm pretty sure people know about Saturday Night Live, but it's a, you know, it's a comedy sketch show that happens every Saturday, it takes place in New York. I don't know, you might have heard of it, <laughs> but uh, Dana Carvey, who played Garth in uh, Wayne's World, and uh, David Spade, he was in Tommy Boy. I'm a huge fan of Saturday Night Live, and when I heard that they had a podcast, I was I was on it like wildfire. Um, so I just, I've truly been enjoying listening to their podcast where they interview um, previous cast members and hosts, and they talk about, you know, the behind the scenes, what it's like to actually be on the show, and they talk about the whole art of comedy, and it's, I'm, I'm just so into it. I don't know why. Just mainly, I think, because I, I love comedy. I love laughing. I love stand up, and you know, just to hear you know them you know just talk shop about it is I, I just love it. So you know, I've been listening to that, um, and I've also recently started listening to the Smartless podcast. Very similar, but it's hosted by Jason Bateman, uh, who is in Arrested Development, and Will Arnett, who is also he was actually a cast member on Saturday Night Live, and he was also on Arrested Development, and then they have another co-host Sean Sean something I'm blanking on his name but uh, yeah he's more into theater uh, but yeah, they interview a lot of celebrities as well. I mean, they run the full gamut. I mean, they have, you know, comedians, SNL members, and then they also had uh, Kate Blanchett they had on, they had Gwyneth Paltrow, they had Jennifer Aniston, Tom Hanks, um, and they just, they just shoot the breeze. It's just so fun to listen to while I work. It just kind of makes time fly. And, you know, especially when I'm sewing, it's just so, I don't know, it's just fun to, to listen to. It's like I'm hanging out with friends and, you know, just talking shop and shooting the breeze. It's, it's great. So, um, if that's, if that's your thing, I'll, I'll leave some links to those, uh, podcasts down below. Um, but other than, other than that, I'm trying to think what else. Um, I haven't really been listening to audiobooks lately. I'm kind of going through a lull. I definitely go through phases where I listen to more podcasts than I do audiobooks. And sometimes I'll listen to more audiobooks than I do podcasts, but you know, it's, it's give and take. But that is what I'm into these days. Um, Dennis and I, we, we did, we just watched uh, Summer of Soul, which was a documentary by Questlove, which highly, highly recommend it, guys. Um, it, if you're not familiar, it um, basically, it, it's a documentary based on a soul festival that happened around the same time Woodstock happened. And it just sat in someone's basement and never saw the light of day. But uh, Questlove produced this uh, and directed, I believe, uh, this documentary. And uh, they, this festival was so incredible. They had Sly and the Family Stone. They had Nina Simone, one of my favorite, favorite musicians. Um, and you know, just, well, they had so many people. Oh, they had, um, the fifth, El fifth dimension, uh, who does Age of Aquarius. One of my favorite songs because I'm an Aquarian. Uh, yeah, it was just so cool to watch. And, you know, the fact that this, festival never, you know, it wasn't given the publicity that Woodstock was given. I mean, it's a mind, completely mind blowing guys. It's definitely recommend, I definitely recommend checking it out. Um, I think it's available on Hulu and you can, you know, rent it on other platforms, but what, what a great documentary. Anyway, I I'm going to leave things there, guys. Thank you so much, as always, again, for hanging out with me. I will be back next week with another episode for you. And again, if you'd like to support this channel, click on the Join button down below where you can enjoy some bonus content for yours truly. Um, I'm coming up with a lot of fun stuff, guys. Um, I'm, making, I'm making a pretty big announcement over, over on the Memberships channel this Monday on the Monday Waffle. So, uh, you know, if, if you are a member, watch that space. So anyway, uh, have an amazing weekend and I will see you next time. Bye.